Hey, what's up guys? Brian Kelly here from Zombie Guitar. I'm going to do a video today that answers a question that I got the other day. So let me read the question for you real quick. I've looked on the website and I'm unable to detect anything relating to the minor caged system. Seeing a few poorly presented YouTube lessons video on the subject, thought maybe you could make a video about this. Yes, I can make a video about this. All right, so first of all, there's no such thing as the minor caged system. There's just the caged system. That's it. All right, that's the first thing. The second thing is... If you're watching other YouTube videos from other teachers and then you're watching my videos, I'm not saying that other teachers are teaching it wrong or anything. It's just that different people teach the cage system in like significantly different ways. You have to understand what the goal is. So the way that I teach the cage system has a very specific goal. The goal of the cage system, the way that I teach it, is you can play any chord anywhere on the fretboard. I'm going to say that again. You can play any chord, any chord, doesn't matter, any chord you can possibly think of anywhere on the entire fretboard using the cage system. There's no minor cage system. It's just the cage system. So today in this video, I'm just going to show you how to play a B minor chord. And we're going to play it in a bunch of different places on the fretboard, and we're going to use the cage system to do so. All right, so in order to apply the cage system, you need to know two things. Number one, you need to know the notes on your low E string and your A string. And then number two, you need to know what your goal is. So today's goal is to play a B minor chord. We're not just going to play a single B minor chord. We're going to play B minor chords all up and down the entire neck of the guitar, and we're going to use the cage system to achieve this very specific goal. All right, so in order to apply this cage system, in order to achieve this goal that we have, which is to play B minor chords all up and down the entire neck, you need to know how to apply the cage system, which has three steps. Number one, you have to find your root note on either the low E string, the A string, or the D string. So we already know that we're trying to create B minor chords, so we have to find the Bs on the A string, the D string, or the low E string. From there, we can build our caged shapes. The second thing is knowing which shapes are available depending on where your root note location is. If your root note location is on the low E string, then you have a G shape available and you have an E shape available. If your root note location is on the A string, then you have a C shape available and an A shape available. If your root note location is on the D string, then you have a D shape available. The third thing is looking at these five shapes Remember, the cage system is only five shapes. There's a C, A, G, E, and D shape. There's only five shapes. These are five major chord shapes. That is the cage system. Instead of just looking at them as shapes, you have to know them by their intervals. You have to know the one, three, and the five for each of the five cage shapes. So with this information, we can then take this to the fretboard and build B minor chords all up and down the entire neck of the guitar simply by knowing where our root note location is. So let's do that now. All right, so the very first instance of the note B that we have starting down on this end of the guitar would be this one right here, the second fret of the A string. All right, so the root note location is on the A string. It's not on the E string. It's not on the D string. It's on the A string right here. When your root note location is on the A string, that tells you that you have a C shape available and you have an A shape available. So if you want to play a C shape, then you would take your pinky and you would put it on the root note. Put your pinky right there on the note B, and then you would apply the C shape. Problem is we don't have enough frets. We run out of frets in this direction, so we don't really have a B chord in the C shape right here. As we get further up here and, then, and we get to the next B that's located on the A string up here, you're going to see that we can play a C shape up there. But down here we don't have enough frets, so we can't play a C shape here. But we also have the A shape available to us. In order to play the A shape, you put your index finger on the root note right there, the note B, and then you play the A shape. So. This is a B major chord. The cage system has five major chord shapes, which when you look at them by their intervals, instead of by their actual notes, you can then make manipulations to them to play any chord that you want. All right, so this is a B major chord. You have your one, you have your five, you have your one, you have your three, and you have your five. That's the A shape. That is a B major chord in the A shape but we're trying to play B minor chords. So how do you make a major chord into a minor chord? You just lower the third. So the A shape only has one instance of the third in it, so that's the only note that we have to worry about lowering. So instead of playing this, we play this. That is a B minor chord. So any combination of the one, three, and the five will result in the chord that you're trying to play. 
or in this case, since we're playing minor chords, any combination of the one, the flattened three, and the five will result in a minor chord. So I could play that whole thing right there, and that's a B minor chord. I could just play this one, this flat three, and this five, and this would also be a B minor chord. I could play this five, this one, and this flat three, and this would be a B minor chord. All right, so there's a couple different ways that you can play a B minor chord just based off the A shape. All right, so the next instance of a B in this direction that's located on either the low E string, the A string, or the D string is gonna be found right here, seventh fret of the low E string, that's your next B. So the root note location is on the low E string. It's not on the A string and it's not on the D string. It's on the low E string. When the root note location is on the low E string, that means you have a G shape and you have an E shape available to you. So let's play both of those now. We'll start out with the E shape. So in order to play an E shape, you take your index finger, you put it on the root note, which is the seventh fret of the low E string, which is the note B, and you apply your E shape. In non-caged speak, this is just known as a major bar chord rooted on the low E string, or just a six string major bar chord. There's a bunch of different names for this particular shape. In caged speak, this is just known as the E shape. Again, we not only need to look at the shape as the shape, but we also need to look at it by its interval breakdown. We need to know where the ones, the threes, and the fives are within this shape, so we can then make our manipulations to it in order to make a minor chord. So this shape right here, the E shape, the one is here, five, one, three, five, one. Again, there's only one instance of the three here. So if you take that three and you lower it by one half step, which creates a flat three, you're now left with a B minor chord. It was a B major chord, but now it's a B minor chord since we lowered that third. So now you have a B minor chord. So any combination of the one, the flat three, and the five is still gonna be a B minor chord. You don't have to play these cage shapes in full. This is just giving you the outline of the chord. And many of the notes are repeated more than once. So this is a B minor. Or if you just play the high four strings, that's a common way to play this shape because you have your one, your flat three, your five, and your one. So you could even drop the high E string too because you have the one in there twice. You could play the one, the flat three, and the five. This is a B minor chord. So there are three different ways that you could play a B minor chord just based off of the E shape. So let's now look at the G shape because our root note location is on the low E string. When your root note location is on the low E string, you have an E shape and a G shape available to you. So we just looked at the E shape. So let's look at the G shape now. So in order to apply this G shape, I like to take my third finger and put it on the root note right there, seventh fret of the low E string. And then I play the G shape like this. You could even bar the, uh, the B and the high E string. So those are all notes of the B major chord. Remember the cage system consists of five major chord shapes, which can be manipulated to play any other chord you want. In this video, we're making them into minor chords. So this is the G shape. Now you don't have to play the shape in full. This is one thing that people always say. They're like, I can't play the G shape in full. Neither can I. Neither can most people. Most people are not gonna be playing this full funky G shape. The only time people actually play the G shape usually is down here because you have open strings to take care of those other notes. But no one plays the G shape in its full form like this. Maybe some people do, but that's really not what the cage system is about. The cage system is just about giving you the, the note locations, all right? So again, we have to break this down and look at it by its numbers. So we have a one, we have a three, we have a five, we have a one, we have a three, we have a five, and we have a one. All right, so we have two instances of the three here, so that means we have two places for which we can take this and manipulate into a minor chord. So you have your one, your three, and your five here. So we could just start off by just lowering that third, making it a flat three, and now here's a B minor chord. So that's one way to do it. Um, so you have your one, your three, your five, your one, three. All right, so right here you have a one, a three, and a five. So that would be a B major chord, but you wanna take that three and lower it to a flat three which would make it a B minor chord, so. 
All right, so that's a B minor chord right there. So we're just gonna do one more here based on the G shape real quick. So uh, you have your one, three, five, one, three. So we're actually just gonna stop here. We're gonna stop on this one right here, this five right here, and then this three right here. But we're gonna make that a half step lower so it's a minor chord. So this would also be a B minor chord. The lowest note's not the note B, which means that this would be considered an inversion. But, you know, it doesn't matter. You just, in the context of music, the bass player is going to be holding down the root note most of the time. If the bass player is not doing it, then the keyboard player is going to be doing it. Um, you know, if not the context of the music, if it's a B minor chord and you happen to play some sort of inversion of a B minor chord, which still consists of the one, the flat three, and the five but your one is not the lowest note, it's gonna be fine. It's still gonna be a B minor chord. It's still gonna function as a B minor chord should. It's still gonna have the sound that, that the song is calling for. You know, so whether you play a B minor chord like this, or whether you play a B minor chord like this, or whether you play it like this, like it's still a B minor chord. You know, you're just taking these notes and you're just kind of, that's it, it's a B minor chord. So where were we at? We did uh, the A shape, we did the E shape, we did the G shape. All right, so let's move up the fretboard a little bit. So um, I said in the beginning, you need to know the notes on your low E string and on your A string. So if you know your notes on your D string by heart, that's awesome. If not, then you can always find the next root note location on the D string. So if you know that this note right here, which is where we just were, seventh fret of the low E string is a B, you can find the next B up the fretboard in this direction by skipping a string and then moving up two frets. And that's gonna be on the D string. If your root note location is on the A string, you have a C shape and an A shape available. If your root note location is on the low E string, you have a G shape and an E shape available. If your root note location is on the D string, then you have a D shape available. So right now our root note location is on the D string. Ninth fret right there of the D string, that is the note B. So we're gonna play a D shape chord right here. So in order to do this, I put my first finger on the root note, which is right there, ninth fret of the D string. And then I use my other three fingers in some sort of configuration like this. Again, you do not have to play the cage shapes in full. This is a very difficult chord to play in its full four string shape. The reason a D major chord down here is easy to play because the open D string is part of the chord. So you don't have to worry about stretching your fingers like that. But if you want to take that same shape and you want to move it up to here, which is how the cage system works, because it's a system of movable major chord shapes, you have to still account for the, you know, you have to account for the note that was previously open, which is now being played right here on the ninth fret, and then filling out the rest of that D shape. So it's not easy to play but it doesn't matter. You just need to know where your ones, threes, and fives are because a one, three, and a five together make a major chord. A one flat three and a five together make a minor chord. We're trying to play B minor chords for this lesson, so we're gonna have to make that manipulation here. So we have our one, we have our five, we have our one, and we have our three. All right, so with that information, we only have uh, one instance of the three here, so you're gonna lower that to make a flat three. So right here, you have your one, your flat three, your fives down here, so that's a B minor chord. And again, that could be considered an inversion right there because your lowest note is not the one. In this particular case, it, the, your lowest note is a five, but this is a B minor chord. No one's gonna argue with that. You could also do a, a bit of an open voicing here where you kind of skip the note on the B string right here and you could play your one, five, and flat three like this. If you wanted to mute out the uh, B string and kind of strum it all together. So it's kind of a cool sound in B minor chord right there. So right there, that's two examples of B minor chords that you could create by using this D shape. So let's continue up the fretboard. Moving up further, the next instance of, a, of the note B that is found on either the low E string, the A string, or the D string. There we go, we have a B right there, 14th fret. So 14th fret of the A string is where our next root note location is. When your root note location is on the A string, you have a C shape and you have an A shape available to you. Now we have frets available in this direction, so we can go ahead and we can play that full C shape. So let's do that now. All right, to play the C shape, you take your pinky, you put it on the root note, which is right there, 14th fret of the A string, and you play the C shape like this. So this is your one, this is your three, 
this is your five, this is your one, and this is your three. So we have two instances of the three here, so we have a couple different ways that we could manipulate this B major chord shape into a B minor chord. Remember, this is a B major chord. So that's a B major chord, but if we want to make that into a B minor chord, we just have to lower the third by one half step. So you don't have to play this in full. It's actually, I don't even think it's possible to play this in full by keeping all five strings intact and lowering the third in both instances, but you don't have to play these shapes in full. That's not what the cage system is about. It just gives you the outline of the potential chords for this location of the fretboard. So we have our one, three, five here. We could lower the third. So one flat three, five. So here's a B minor. All right, so one, three, five, one. So let's keep this, uh, let's keep the three. We'll lower that by half step, flat three. So here's a five and then here's a one. So you could play your B minor chord like this. All right, and then you could go one, three, five, one, three. All right, so we can take this three up here and lower that, make that a flat three. So here's a B minor chord like this. All right, so you have this B minor chord, you have this B minor chord, and then you have this B minor chord, all coming from the C shape right there. And then that's it, that's the entire cage system because everything else moving in that direction further is just a repeat of what we've already done. We've already done the full cage system for this much of the fretboard. So that's the full cage system for a B minor chord. Anything else beyond this point is just repeating. So we started out with our root note location right here on the A string, which gives us a C shape and an A shape available. We couldn't play the C shape down here, but we could play the A shape down here. We just got done playing the C shape here. We could play the A shape up here too. We already did that down here. It's, everything repeats every 12 frets on the guitar. So here's a B major chord. All right, so here's your one, here's your five, here's your one, here's your three, here's your five. Lower that third. There's only one instance of the three in the A shape. So here's your one, five, one, flat three, five. All right, so you have a B minor chord. You have a B minor chord. You have a B minor chord. All right, so that's all with the A shape. Moving up even further, the next instance of the B will be on the 19th fret of the low E string, which is the same as what we did right here, seventh fret of the low E string. You have a G shape and an E shape available. And then skip a string up two more frets. That's where the next root note location is on the D string. You could then, you know, play the D shape, make those manipulations, and then you run out of frets that way. So you can do this for any chord. It doesn't matter. We just made minor chords today. If you want to make C dominant seventh chords, you can do that. If you want to make B flat augmented chords, you could do that. If you want to play D sharp diminished chords, whatever, it doesn't matter. You can play any chord anywhere on the entire neck of the guitar and you can use the cage system to do exactly that. So I hope that answered your question. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you for watching. See you next time.